Hey folks and welcome to Ahad's Automotive. Today we have with us the MG Hector. Now speaking of the design of the MG Hector, the one thing it's got common with the Tata Harrier is the position of the DRL on top and the headlamps below. And right below the headlamp is the cornering fog lamp. And right below that is the parking sensor. Now taking a look at the car head on, you can see it's got a really imposing grille and it's not BMW level huge but still it's quite big. It's got an MG logo right below which you find the front camera for the 360 degree camera. There's a good silver dash of skip plate over there which looks good. Another talking point of the MG Hector is the LED floating turn indicators. Basically what it means is that each time the indicator is switched on, if it's the right hand side they move towards the right hand side and if it's the left hand side they move towards the left hand side, giving it a floating appearance. Now coming towards the side of the car, as you can see it's well designed. The only thing that is a bit amiss over here is the rims. Now these are 17 inch in size, but thanks to the design of the body, they look really tiny. Walking up to the car, this is the side view mirror which is folded in because the door is locked. Now the Hector does have smart key, so press off the button and there you go. Now that is the left hand side camera for the 360 degree camera, coming towards the side. You can see there's a Morris Garage badging over there. And there's this chrome strip that runs from the start with a kink at the end and up top. Glass area is pretty good, gives the cabin a nice airy feel. This car does have four wheel disc brake. Coming towards the rear of the car. It's smartly designed, I must say, and it's got a hint of an Audi Q5, like touch with the tail lamps. Eliminate the red strip between the two head tail lamps over here, and you've got an Audi-like design. Now, the speciality of the Hector is its connectivity. So, it's got a badge that says internet inside. You got the Hector badging here. Silver diffuser at the end. And this is the reversing lamp parking sensor as well, the rear camera, now another highlight of the MG Hector is the boost space, so opening up the electronic tailgate, you can see a massive boot. boot lamp over there now since this is an electronically operated boot all you have to do is give it a press and you're done now let's get inside the Hector to see how good it is now to get inside the Hector it does have smart keys so this is the key of the MG Hector, put it in your pocket, walk up to the car, press the button and you're welcomed by this really nice cabin. Now this is the top spec trim, so it does have leather seats, the door pad is finished in leather, nice good chrome dull silver finish, the window switches lock and unlock for the doors these are your mirror controls this is to fold in the mirror this is to choose the right or left mirror to adjust the mirror headlamp leveler instrument illumination control and this is for the boot now if i press this once it opens up the boot 
Now, if I press it again, it closes the boot, which is really, really convenient. And once we are in the Hector, left look on the clutch, gear in neutral, start button. Now once you're inside the cabin of the MG, the first thing you're welcomed is by this neat 7 inch color multi information display. Now on the left hand side we have the speedometer and on the right hand side we have an anti-clockwise rev meter. Which is quite weird I must say. Now if you take a look at the center display, it is neat, crisp and very well laid out. Now to control the display, these buttons are on the steering over here. So with this, we can control what is being displayed up here. First it's the tire temperature, your driving time and your range, your current speed and instant fuel economy, trip 2 average, trip 1 average, tire pressure sensors. And on the top we have digital fuel gauge and as well as the coolant temperature. Now pressing this button over here, it takes us to the driver warning system that is the fatigue driving and warning messages. Another press brings up the multimedia system, phone, your navigation and back to the car's display. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, it does remind me a bit of BMW steering wheel. I mean it's well finished in leather. And it's got a perforated finish over here. The buttons have a good click to them. And this is your multimedia systems button. Take call, end call, mute, volume up and down, seek track. This is your voice assist over here. And this is to switch on and off the system. The stocks are on the correct side for the Indian variant. So you have your indicator headlamp stock on the right and your wiper stocks on the left. Now the main party trick of the MG Hector is its 10.4 inch touchscreen. It's quite good display wise, it's got a good resolution, the display is very well positioned and all your controls are on the display. Well except for the power on and off, your volume up and down and your demister. Now the system is sort of based on Android, so you do have the swipeable tiles below. So you have your inbox, your setting, your file manager swipe and you get your eye call I guess that's a smart feature your tire pressure monitor and Ghana swiping back we do have Apple CarPlay Android Auto as well as your phone if you connect one and the top tiles are music navigation and FM now right below that you do see the AC controls your voice command as well as the 360 degree camera and pressing the 360 degree camera as you can see I do get complete 360 degree camera over here the quality is quite good but then coming towards the top down view I must say it's a bit grainy hitting back we have the AC controls over here as you can see auto, auto mode to enable the auto mode your temperature setting your fan setting your positions and this to on and off the AC system Now on the top you can see there are quick navigation button to your music, your phone, navigation which is powered by TomTom. Tom. Now the system is taking a bit of time, this is probably because this is the first time it's being launched into these apps. So pressing menu, you can add your home search add work and stuff now hitting back as you can see the display is quite good and yes it is a bit glitchy but then again it's fine now another party trick of the MG Hector is its voice command so all you have to say is hello MG 
I'm here. Open sunroof. Hello, MG. I'm listening. Close sunroof. Hello, MG. Yes. Lower passenger side window. Pardon? Lower passenger side front window. Sorry, but I still didn't get that. Please try again. See, so there are certain commands that it does not understand. That's because there are 99 preset commands for the MG Hector. I'll be listing them down in the description area of the video. So do check them out. The major selling point of the MG Hector is its connectivity features. So with the help of the MG app, you can remotely switch on and off the AC, open and close the sunroof, remotely lock and unlock the doors, remotely light flashing and honking. You can find your car and you can even track your stolen car with assistance from MG. You can have a vehicle status check through the app, check your tire pressure, vehicle security alarm, vehicle collision alarm, set a geofence up to 100 kilometers, and if there's a speed limit set, you do get a notification if that's crossed. Navigation-wise, it's an online navigation system where it takes data from the embedded system in the system. It does give you destination-based parking suggestion, along the way fuel station suggestion, location-based speed alert, avoid part of route during navigation, city traffic at a glance. Then you have the voice recognition where you say hello MG to activate the system's feature, e-call that's an emergency call that the car makes if it thinks you are in distress. Then there's the entertainment system where Ghana app music app is preloaded into the system. The system even gets OTA over the air updates to make itself more responsive. There's a weather app installed within the system. It even gets personalization touches, that is you can change the theme of the system. Right now it only has grey and blue, but down the line you can put whatever theme MG puts up for downloads. I really think the system is a good one with a lot of connectivity features and the promised OTA updates. This could be a very, very responsive system down the line. I mean, it is laggy right now, but then you know, with a couple of updates, I think MG can really make it work. Now, coming to the dashboard of the vehicle, it's got this four leather finish over here, but it's got this really hard, shiny plastic on the top. Not so good, I must say. Now, opening the glove box, as you can see, it's quite deep and it's cooled as well. And that's the passenger side door. Now, the speaker system for the top of the line trim is powered by Infinity, as you can see. The seating in the front seat, I must say, is one of the most comfortable I've ever had. Now, the seats in the top spec trim are powered. The top two trims of the MG Hector come with power adjustable driver seat. They are six way adjustable, front and back, up and down and the reclining function. The passenger seat is also power adjustable but it's a four way power adjustable seat. It misses out on the height function. Now the top trim hybrid variant misses out on the passenger powered seat as well. Now the inside rear view mirror of the MG Hector is, yep, you guessed it, it's normal type, not an electrochromic one. And here we have the sunglass holder, close it, the sunroof controls, this is to pull down the shade and pull up the shade, your lights, and this is the microphone area. 
as you can see the driver's side does have an illuminated vanity mirror and so does the passenger side Now right below the touch screen we do have a 5 watt 2 ampere USB port this is the USB port this is for charging this is the USB port for the system and this is your aux cable Now the Hector in its diesel form comes only in a 6 speed manual for now automatic variant might come later but there's no confirmation on that Coming a bit down we have a normal handbrake parking sensor button this is the front parking sensor to switch it on and off and this is the 360 degree camera as you can see there's illumination in the cup holder as well and this is the armrest as you can see it's very well finished and it's quite good opening it up there is space inside but it is only a bit deep now let's get in the rear seat of the MG Hector. Now getting in to the rear seat of the MG Hector is quite easy. It's just walking in rather than climbing in. And boy oh boy the amount of space in here is amazing. This might be the only reason certain people might buy the car. Sitting three abreast will be a breeze. And this backrest can be reclined or set to a particular angle you like. It does have rear AC vents, which can be individually adjusted. Quality of them seems good. Taking a look, there you can see some of the ambient lighting. The car does have ambient lighting throughout the interior. The infinity speaker, your leather door armrest, your power window switches, the infinity tweeter. Now the rear seat space. I've been in a Harrier, I've been driven around in one, and I must say this feels so much better. Now another talking point, although I've shown it to you in the voice command, is the panoramic sunroof. As you can see, I've pulled back the shade, it's half done. This is just the roof without the glass being opened. And now this is it fully taken back. As you can see, only a tiny amount of the roof is left covered. The rest of it is this massive panoramic sunroof. Now only the, this part over here can be opened up. This remains fixed, but still it gives the cabin a lot of air inside. Now what powers the MG Hector is this 2 litre turbo diesel engine which puts out 170 PS and 350 Nm of torque. Now the best part about this engine bay is, look at how clean it is, it's so well laid out and only the essentials are accessible. Now unfortunately I could not drive this car. But the only short experience I got it from taking the yard to this workshop, I must say it is decent enough to drive. The gearbox is the six-speed manual. The gear throws are a bit notchy, but apart from that, I felt the engine is good. It's nice, but then again, I might have to drive it, you know, for a couple of hours to actually understand how it is. So what's my view on the MG Hector? Well, for one, it's not just a new car, it's a new brand that's being launched in India. MG, which stands for Morris Garage, was a British manufacturer, now owned by SAIC, a Chinese automotive company. Now, taking that aside, the Hector itself, the design is something different, but then we've seen some similarities with the Venue and the Harrier. 
Interior quality is decent, but not Hyundai level, but close to the Tatas and the Mahindras. The level of equipment is outstanding, and I don't think there's another car in its class that's this well equipped. Now, the unknowns over here are the service, the cost of spares, and the after sales support. But that said, if MG prices the Hector really well, they truly do have a winner on their hands. And I, for one, am truly impressed by the MG Hector.